Ongkoyo. Ong yung jumla pa ka hamto ka jumla ka ni di sa mga ay ng pula ng pagkaka chunto. Ano dumna sa pinya na may hamto ka tang sumulod ng dal di puso sa say. Sumjoy. Thank you, Mr. President. Sapinya, some Okun Lok Rutin. Mr. President, so far today, I've been discussing this book, but none of you have been able to see it on the screen. I think it might help everyone in the course if the AV unit can now pull up the extracts that I'm referring to so that the information is available for everyone. Can I please make that? Application. application. Mr. President, we have all these items already. It's just a matter of switching the screen so that they can be displayed. Okay. To assist the AV unit, so all, everyone is E3 slash 22, and the next page I'm moving to is English ERN 00393765. Mr. Header, page 102. We're still in the 1960s, and the quote is towards the bottom of this page. Thus, urban protest and peasant unrest against the Sankum regime broke out in, 19, in 1966 and intensified in early 1967. This created possibilities for the Kampuchea Workers' Party to organize opposition, either directly or via Q Sompong and other dissident intellectuals amenable to its views, through whom the party continued to try to project influence, and the image of a Cambodian revolution led by French-educated doctors of philosophy. Footnote 14, in short form, quotes Pol Pot presents the long title is Pol Pot Presents the Cambodian Party's Experiences to Kham Khan, the Secretary General of the Communist Party of Thailand, in formal talks held in August 1977, a document from the Vietnamese archives translated into English by Thomas Engelbert and Christopher um, Gosha uh, from a Thomas Vietnamese Ban translation of the Khmer original. Uh, Can I ask Mr. Hedder how you came in po to possession of, of this document? Um, that was given Chum to me by, by Chris uh, Gosha. Uh, the tool below, uh, Christopher. Uh, can I, uh, um, <coughs> the, the mystery document, uh, I, I can now say uh, I think this is an interview of if this is an appropriate time to uh, deal with that issue. Uh, and so who, who is this person? Good. Uh, this is an interview with someone. Can I say the name? 
ដែលគឺមានស្គាល់អ្នកនោះជាងនិយាយ Similar document that he received is made in Mr. Heder ហើយមកឲ្យយើងខ្ញុំវិញបាទសម្ការអ្នកបែបនេះបាទលោកសក្តិសេចឈ្មោះ <coughs> Mr. President, what I'm going to suggest is we will now email everybody so that they have this name. Can I ask uh, Mr. Hedder uh, what position this person held or just a little bit more information about this person? As he says, the interview, he was a district secretary. Thank you. Can we continue with page 102? I'm following on from footnote 14. In accordance with the KWP tactic, adopted for the 1962 elections, Underground KWP networks were hard to ensure Q Sampong's re-election in the next ballot in September 1966. The party also helped Hu Nim but not Hu Yuan during a campaign in which all three had to compete against each other, sorry, against other Sankum candidates backed by Senna. The footnote number 50 I'd like to read. Uh, in Sapir, in Q Sampong, pages 72 to 73, who quotes Sampong as indicating he was very reliant on this assistance and notes that Hu Nim was the more dynamic campaigner. Q Sampong's constituency was in southern Kandal province, in what was then a part of the East Zone but bordered directly on Takia province in the southwest zone. The underground networks of both zones supported his campaigning activities. And then just these words, interview with a former Communist Party member from Krek Kaba district, Takia province, sector 13, southwest zone. <laughs> we know about you, Poppy, does just giving you this bare information about an interview with a former Communist Party member help at all or not? Just bare not without access to files that I only have somewhere in the UK. Uh, 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 
like next to move to a new chapter in your book. It's tabbed on yours with C-O-N-C towards the bottom to indicate conclusion. Can I check you have that chapter and the first page of the chapter is 159. And the title of the chapter is Conclusion, People's War. Revolution and Popularity, 1970 to 1975. The first page that I'd like to ask you about within this chapter is on page 162. And the ERN in English that I'd like the AV to show is 0093825. This is talking about the period after the coup. In 1970. I quote. Within a month of the coup, the Vietnamese Workers' Party was in control of a swathe of territory 20 to 60 kilometers deep into Cambodia. Together with areas where the Long Nol administration was paralyzed, this created a liberated area with a population of 1 million. The VWP considered that this and Sihanouk's stance against the coup meant the Cambodian revolution was making a great leap forward, being well on the way to creating a revolutionary government. Footnote 27 refers to documents illustrating Vietnamese communist subversion in Cambodia. Document number six, base area meeting, Lieutenant Colonel, and can I spell his name because I'll pronounce it improperly, N-G-U-Y-E-N, Van, V-A-N, Vang, V-A-N-G, B-1924, Go Vap District, Gia Din, G-I-A-D-I-N-H, First XO, SR2, brackets, Pike Collect, close brackets. Again, can you help us on the source? Um, that the original of that document is Vietnam document of the English language. បាទដល់ឲ្យខ្ញុំមួយទៀតគឺស្ថានទូតអាមេរិកនៅសៃហ្គងហើយ Thank you. Page 1973, talking about 1970. A Q Sampong communique 
making no mention of the Vietnamese, declared that the Cambodian people's struggle to set up people's power was spreading vigorously as the Cambodian National Liberation Armed Forces developed quickly, attacking 12 provincial capitals liberating four of them, many district capitals, and hundreds of villages. Footnote 32. 20th of June 1970, communicated by the Ministry of National Defence of the Government of the National Union of Cambodia, VNA, 29 June 1970. I think I know the answer, but VNA, and how did you obtain this? Um, VNA Vietnam was VNA Vietnam successor to VNA Vietnam. So it's the official news agency of the Republic of Vietnam. Continuing on from footnote 32, <coughs> in August, so in August 1970, Funk claimed that its armed forces had wiped out 80,000 US Lon Nol and Saigon enemy troops and completely liberated five provinces of Cambodia. Footnote 33, New China News Agency. 7 August 1970, citing the Funk Information Bureau. Again, just a little bit about the New China News Agency. Uh, New China News Agency is the Continuing on with the next sentence, in September 1970, it said it controlled nearly three of Cambodia's seven million people. Footnote 34 references. 17 September communique of the political bureau of the NUFK Central Committee and the Royal Government of National Union of Cambodia, New China News Agency, 7 August 1970. Uh, it was the political bureau of the NUFK Central Committee. Can you help a little bit on that? Uh, Formally speaking, the National the United Front of Cambodia, which was the ostensibly and uh, in fact non-communist um, political organization backing the Royal Government National Unity of Cambodia um, was headed by a central above the central committee so it was organized it organized along communist party lines but it was not communist Thank you. Page 164, English ERN, 00393827. Extract, I quote. The CPK began in 1971 formally to demand the Vietnamese dissolve and turn over its control the armed forces and political structures they had organized in Cambodia, especially in the east and southwest zones where the elites were most numerous. 45. 
the black paper, facts and evidence of the acts of aggression and annexation of Vietnam against Campuchia, Phnom Penh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, September 1978. So again, just how you source that or this reference to black people. I mean, in, in this instance, it's a, it's a full academic citation to that, to that publication, uh, which in its English version uh, was disseminated in the United States by the same G.K. Rahm organization Do you know where it was printed? It looked like to me the version that reached me Next, it will be the bottom of page 165, moving into page 166, ERN English 00393828. As late as the end of 1972, The CPK again fell back on Vietnamese military intervention to defeat key Lon Nol offensives. Footnote 57, Engelbert and Gosher falling out, page 116. That's another academic, is it a book or an article? I don't know if Mr. Hedder's microphone can come on, please. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a, uh, an academic publication. Going on with the same page. And as late as August 1973, Vietnamese Special Weapons Unit assisted CPK attacks again Engelbert and Gosha. Nevertheless, throughout 1972 and into 1973, the CPK pursued its goal of getting Vietnamese troops to evacuate its liberated zones. In some places, it managed to negotiate their departure, but where the negotiations failed, it organized the population to demonstrate against them or launched military attacks on them. By the end of 1973, they were gone from most CPK controlled areas. Footnote 59 references Matsushita interviews number 15, 18, 23 and 30 describing events in the east, southwest and special zones. We're going to come to some of the refugee interviews. You've already touched upon these with Matsushita. It's the same interviews I take uh, it. Uh, yes, it's drawn from that collection of uh, typed up versions of the news done February, March 1980 under the auspices of Kyoto News now, in terms of this withdrawal of the Vietnamese from Cambodia in 1973, aside from the 1980 Matsushita interviews, have you been in possession of, seen, considered? other interviews that support the fact of the Vietnamese withdrawal at that time in these circumstances. Footnote 
for once the short answer. Lời. Yes. Bad. clay. A short expansion. ສໍາລວມສົມອ້າຍລູກປັນຍຸນບໍາພືປັນຕາອ້າຍຄໄລ but ពពដកគួរឲ្យជឿ uh, I'd like you to concentrate on the interviews you conducted on this subject. First question, can you remember the, the sorts of people, or is that too simplistic a question, that you interviewed who gave information about this subject? Um, yeah, short answer. ជាការបន្យល់បន្ថែមក្លីនោះ Patrick when I looked uh, at the basic diagram the if I ask you to go on the internet and hide or do whatever research you can, is there any possibility that if I came back to this subject tomorrow about the 1973 Vietnamese withdrawal, that you may be in a position to pinpoint any particular interviews A portion in the middle of the page. 
Inside Cambodia, the CPK kept Grunk Minister of Propaganda and Minister of Interior Kuyun under virtual house arrest. While exploiting their names in propaganda, they sometimes wrote themselves that still gave the impression that they were leaders of the revolution. Unofficially, however, Hu Yun was openly critical of the CPK, its leadership and policies. Hu Nim agreed with him, but was more circumspect and sycophantic. Footnote 69. Pung Se interview. Steve Hedder's interview with Pung Se, Phnom Penh, 25 July 1999. So again, to confirm the source and just a little bit please about interview Pung Se and a general description of him and his position or how he fits in to the overall picture. Pung uh, Sai was a, one of the, uh, the first generation of Cambodian communists, the same generation as Yen Sari, and so on. If I recall correctly, also had a sojourn, educational sojourn in France, uh, came back as part of the Communist Party organization inside Cambodia, um, either shortly before or immediately after the 1950 agreement, the Communist Party agreement is Party apparatus, underground party apparatus, uh, in the post period, we're talking about the mid to late 1950s, and then fell out with the Communist Party, or kind of lapsed from membership, but continued to be a kind of leftist politician, leftist politician, leftist politician, leftist politician, leftist politician, leftist politician, and was at the party, the complex of offices that constituted the party headquarters in the Maquis and was in touch with ministry ทัวร์การในกระทรวงศึกษาธิการกรรมการประชาธิปไตยอ๋อสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมสมส
was the odd man in. He'd been rewarded for his submissiveness by promotion to alternate central committee membership, footnote 17. And that references Q. Sampon's open letter to my compatriots, 16th of August 2001. And your uh, inter it says interview with Steve Hedder. We'll come to that later. In terms of the year, that your research or documentation or interviews has yielded. Can you tell us what, what your understanding is of, of what year Q. Sampong was promoted to Central Committee membership? Alternate or full? Alternate. Um, my understanding is 71. Continuing with the extract, referring to Q Sampong, and the post working as a kind of personal secretary to Nguyen, Although even he had no independent decision-making power. Footnote 71 states, Tion Prasit interview. Interview of Tion Prasit, New York, 8 September 1997. First question was that an interview you had with Tion Prasit. Yes. I'm interested in the phrase post-working as a kind of personal secretary to Nguyen. Can you help us on what Tion Prosit actually said? Or is it too long ago? Please comment. And, and if you can help us. Um, I without seeking out the notes, hopefully finding them, I can't be absolutely sure how much I may have paraphrased what was said. I wouldn't swear to it. Still on this page, bottom of page 167, Although the CPK would for the most part steadfastly deny it, its victory was due in large part to unwelcome Vietnamese assistance of 1970 to 1972. Vietnamese armed intervention and political and military organization and training provided the shield behind which the CPK developed its strength and also many of the cadre and forces that Came part of that strength as the CPK took them on. Academic publication by a U.S. government, State Department, political officer was in Cambodia, 71, 75, and outside Cambodia after 75. Quote. Already in late 
1970, early 1971, the Vietnamese Workers' Party, while it remained predominant, and the CPK as it took control, increasingly relied on the pressure of their armed power to maintain and extend their control, where the Vietnamese military operated in overwhelming force. It sealed off the liberated zones from the rest of the country. Footnote 75, reference David Brown on Vietnamese Communists, 1971. Can you help on that source? Can you help on that source? I, I, I believe that one of the documents that's in the Vietnam collection at Texas Tech, probably part of the Douglas Pike collection, but it might be cataloged in a different manner. Thank you. Continuing with the sentence about the Vietnamese military. Enforcing a ban on population movements between them, in other words, between the liberated zones. Reference 76. It's got H7. Forwards the July 1970 resolution adopted by the current affairs committee of CL2 to agencies for study and execution. 19. 19 July 1970 brackets Pike collection, the same collection you've already covered. Many rural folk felt trapped in the liberated zones, reluctantly acquiescing to communist control, whether Vietnamese or Cambodian. Footnote 77 references two things, David Brown on Vietnamese communists with code, but secondly, Cambodian star, formerly an enemy captive, says that peasants adjoining the Reds, New York Times, 2nd November 1970. So I obviously take it you saw the New York Times and reference that to this event. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. They fled when they could. Footnote 78 is the same document that we've just covered from the New York Times. No, sorry, forgive me. Peasants flee red control in Cambodia, the Los Angeles Times, 3rd of January 1971. Los Angeles and time. Montagnards who fled Cambodia get little aid. New York Times, 10 April 1971. Are those correct footnote references? Thank you. Can you help us with the sentence? I presume so, yes. And, and all of those kinds of materials were also are, 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 are collected by the Cornell University Library and bound there, so they should be sitting there in the bowels of that university library. Talking of the people fleeing, and I carry on with the quotes, in context, fled from a revolution that enjoyed even less popular support than that in southern Vietnam. Footnote uh, 79 references why Cambodia didn't fall. Christian Science Monitor, 10 November 1970. Is that correct? Same answer, yes, correct. And, and presumably from the Cornell University Library Collection. Moving to page 169, English ERN 00393832. As the CPK 
became more politically autonomous of the VWP in 1971-1972. Much of the population remained, quote, cynical, distrustful and fearful, close quote, of a revolution that maintained its position through threats and executions. Footnote 83, references, a U.S. Central Intelligence Agency Intelligence Information Report, Khmer Communist Educational and Indoctrinational Activities in Bante Shrey District, Siem Reap Province. Khmer Communist Detention Camp at Wolus, Siem Reap Province for civilian offenders, 6 June 1972. How did you please access this report? Report. Um, not to speak ill of the dead, uh, but the late Douglas Pike um, often had access to classified material uh, which he put into his public collection through what's known as field declassification. It means you cut off the bit at the top, cut off the bit at the bottom, and you put it out there where others can read it. So I think this material almost certainly uh, is in the Texas Tech collection of Vietnam War era documents. Thank you. Continuing. As the CPK expelled Vietnamese armed forces in 1972-73, it replaced their military domination with increasingly extreme coercion to ensure peasant compliance with its demands. The CPK became even more violent and repressive after mid-1973, when it radicalized its policies, insisting on the formation of agricultural cooperatives in the zones under its control, curtailing the practice of religion, imposing even stricter prohibitions on villagers' movements, and mobilizing the population for attacks on the Footnote 84 about coercion references Donald Kirk, Revolution and Political Violence in Cambodia, 1970 to 1974, in Joseph J. Zasloff and McAllister Brown. Communism in Indochina, New Perspectives. Firstly, who was Donald Kirk? Um, Donald Kirk was an American war correspondent active throughout Indochina what we call the Second Indochina War, that is the one that ended in 1975. I believe he's still alive, he's a journalist now in Korea. Another portion on the same page. Footnote 85, Donald Kirk was the head of the CPK from 1973 to 1973 
Revolution and rural response. Who is Revolution, Um, it's Kate Friesen, uh, who Good did a PhD uh, with David Chandler, and I believe this passage is taken from her PhD, although there was a published article based on her PhD, which may be what I said. I want to go back, because I've neglected to speak about footnote 85 which is about in part mobilizing the population for attacks on Phnom Penh. And your source for that, Kenneth M. Quinn, Political Change in Wartime, the Khmer Kraham Revolution in Southern Cambodia, 1970 to 1974, Naval War College Kiernan, how Pol Pot came to power, and Frierson, revolution and rural response. You've explained Frierson. We know Kiernan. Who was Kenneth M. Quinn? Uh, Ken, Ken Quinn was a U.S. Foreign Service Officer, um, based, if I recall correctly, is in the U.S. Consulate in Kanto in southern Vietnam, from which he did political reporting, including reporting based on what he was told by Cambodians who came from Cambodia into Vietnam. And the, this article was based on what he called an airgram, which was a, a report that he sent back to either to the embassy or to Washington. Thank you. Sorry. One of the references uh, is Ben Kiernan, how Pol Pot came to power. Pages 368-393. You should have, in one of your next tabs, I hope, extracts from Ben Kien. Can you confirm whether that is in your file or not? Can I explain, please, Mr. President and Your Honours? These documents have been presented already to you by me in a document presentation. They are extracts from E3-1815. And I want to summarise them and ask Mr. Some questions. Mr. Hedder, can I take you to the second page in your pack now, which should be page 369 of Kiernan, English ERN, and I wonder if this go up on the screen, 0, 0, 4, 8, 7, 4, 8, 9, the Khmer is 0, 0, 1, 0, 4, 8, 6, 9, this part not available in French. I'm going to try and summarize, if we may, Mr. Hedder. It's talking about 1973 and the evacuation of Krachi. Now, from your research, studying documentation, interviews you conducted, did you come into possession of information or facts that can help this cause? on the evacuation of Krachi in 1973. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je ne sais pas si Monsieur Eder s'en rend compte, mais 
il est en train de glisser de la position de témoin à expert. Il est très clair que la question qui vient d'être posée par Monsieur le procureur, malgré les quelques décorations qu'il a voulu placer en exergue euh, et à l'intérieur desquelles il faisait mine de se référer à des documents, est une question qui est posée aux témoins comme s'il s'agissait d'un expert. Nous savons tous ici, malgré ce que nous pouvons en penser les uns et les autres, aujourd'hui, M. Eder ne comparaît pas devant cette chambre en sa qualité d'expert, ou en qualité d'expert tout court d'ailleurs, mais en qualité de témoin ayant pour euh, fonction, objet, intérêt de donner des indications sur euh, la manière dont il a collecté des informations avant et pendant son travail pour le tribunal. Donc nous sommes, à mon sens, clairement avec cette question en train de passer du statut de témoin tel que défini par votre chambre à celui potentiellement d'expert. Et je formule donc une objection à ce que cette question soit posée à M. Ezer. I haven't asked one question about opinion. I'm not going to ask one question about opinion because you've given your directions. I'm not asking his opinion about Christchurch. I'm asking him, did he, through his research, and through his interviews, come to the conclusion that it was easy? I'm not asking him what his opinion is. I'm not asking him what his opinion is. I'm not asking him what his opinion is. Can I ask this? Because I think Already Mr. Head has made it clear. He's conducted many interviews that are not on our case file. And so in my respect for Smishin, I'm personally entitled to ask him, based on his direct knowledge, interviews that he has had to quote the trial chamber's memo. Can I please proceed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Heder, can I repeat the question? Here, Kenan is talking about the evacuation of Krachi in 1973. You said already, I think, that you were in Cambodia in 1973 to 1975. So perhaps I'll ask you, I recall correctly from May of 1973, and I recall specifically until 11 April 1975. In 1973, evacuation or no help. Frankly, nothing leaps immediately to mind. If I look in my notebook, I might find something that there is nothing that's in the front of my mind that I can say to you with certainty. Yes, I know there is something there. Moving on to Kiernan Page, 371. English RN 0087489. Khmer 0010487. No French. Kiernan. 
ចំឡើយនៅក្នុងកំណត់ខ្ញុំមកលើនេះខ្ញុំមិនដឹកឃើញពីអាគ្រីវីសលីព្រីវីសលីអ្នកចំឡើយដល់ខើក Sapphire, can you pull up this page, please? Some low on Kiernan, uh, Udong, March 1974, talks about Donald Kirk investigating the aftermath. I don't want to leave in any way. On this one, happens, I can. Uh, I went to the the Interviewed some people who said that there had been executions on the spot. Uh, some categories of people, including Buddhist nuns. Uh, and I have a pretty clear recollection of the state of those bodies. I certainly saw the bodies. Vaguely I remember having seen maybe half a dozen bodies of women dressed as Buddhist nuns. Did you see anyone ສາສອບຫຼືນາຊິດທະຫິນລະນົນເດກາວນໍອ່າອີ່ໂດນຣີຄໍລ່າຊິມລາຍຂ້ອຍມັນຈໍາເອີ້ຈະລາຍລູກ
ក្រុមឡើងខ្មែរក្រហមដែលជួលកាន់កាប់ដងដល់ប្រជាជនចេញ um, I suspect it was on the 19th that population the I don't have those figures in my head. What was Udon like, the state of the town, in terms of buildings, destruction, destruction normal? Can you just paint a little bit of a picture for us? Udon, 19th of March, 1974. My recollection is that the town was largely destroyed, very much shot up, um, that the pagoda on the top of the hill was also seriously damaged. Uh, the bodies of the, of the nuns were actually on the hillside, uh, on the way up to the top of that pagoda. Um, the town itself was deserted. Nobody there, some very military had come into the area, uh, but no, no, local, no local population, um, except for a handful of people, and, and those were the ones who, to whom I spoke, um, who had somehow managed to not get evacuated. Um, it evaded the evacuation, and I think we're talking about, you know, in that regard, uh, dozens of people, certainly not hundreds, and absolutely uh, not thousands. Several handfuls. Were you able to ascertain where the evacuated people had gone to? Yes, um, I can certainly tell you. Uh, my recollection is west. Can you help us on who had commanded the Khmer Rouge troops, either by name or by zone, in other words, which Khmer troops undertook this activity? in Udong in March 1974 Mr. President, now we're passing the zone or the, the border between being a witness and being an expert. The question was first, what did you see when you arrived there? Well, the West Coast, that is still within the realm of what a witness could have seen and could have heard. At the moment, the question now comes as to who was the Khmer Rouge leader in charge of all this? Is it typical expert in charge of all this? Is it typical expert in charge of all this? Crossing the did you speak to anyone? Did you
the, the, the answer is certainly not at the time. In other words, it, presuming that I'm right that it was the 19th the, the next day, uh, I, I, I wasn't in those days in the kind of, in a position to ask those kinds of questions or even in a position to know to ask those kinds of questions. Um, and the reason I phrased my answer the way I did is I'm thinking about what I know from other interviews that I subsequently did about who it was that was operational in those areas, whether or not so, uh, by putting together the location with my information from my subsequent interviews, I can draw an inference. Uh, whether there's among those subsequent interviews somebody that I had the good sense to ask this specific question of and got an explicit answer, yet again, I could only answer by going through all the notebooks and, and looking for it. From my perspective, this is a now, we've already said there's lots of your interviews and not on our case file. Uh, I've asked you once already in connection with a different aspect. But is there any way that you would be able to identify material that assists the court on which troops undertook this activity overnight into the next day? How long would you need? Is it feasible? Is it possible? Um, let me try and explain about the 1978, 1984 interviews. Um, first, of course, it's pre-digital. Um, the, the, the way in which those, most of those interviews eventuated, I, I have described. They were, I looked at the quantitative uh, interviews uh, with the minimal uh, bio data uh, and then tried to track uh, down uh, uh, to try and follow up in, uh, on cases uh, that I thought uh, were uh, interesting. Uh, um, I have to say that this material uh, was repeatedly uh, offered uh, to the court. Uh, uh, first when I was in the office of the uh, co-prosecutors and second uh, when I was in uh, the office uh, of uh, the co-investigating uh, judges. Uh, and there was no interest um, or little, in, li little or no interest would be a fairer, perhaps, um, summary. And the reason for that is that the, that the assessment was that they were of, and I have to say this, I guess, they were of little or no probative value. And the reason, I'm, I'm interrupting, I need to ask you a simple question. No, the, the simple answer is no. It's not Easy, it's not simple. ហើយគុណតម្រាំងសាប់រាញ្ញាគុណសាក់តៃរៀបរាយដល់ពេលសំរំរឿងតម្រាក់ហើយ Xong rồi, chào.